Ariel gets her Christmas wish of spending time with her family in her dream cottage. It's not exactly what she wants, because she shares ownership with an annoying guy, Mark, who refuses to budge. Six days before Christmas, Ariel is shopping at the mall with her mother Amy and sister Jasmine. Ariel hates all the fuss around shopping. Jasmine finds a purse she desperately wants. She tries to suggest Ariel can gift it to her since she just got a huge promotion at work. Ariel doesn't have a boyfriend, so Jasmine feels like she can spend the money on her. Amy seems sure Ariel will eventually find someone special. Ariel hopes so too, and wants this guy to be smart and affectionate. She also hopes he's loyal and likes places over material things, unlike Jasmine. Ariel refuses to spend the holidays shopping. She wishes that they make Christmas about spending time with loved ones, baking cookies, and making ornaments. Amy assures her that Christmas will be what she makes it. Arel turns back and bumps into Santa, who has heard her wish. He claims to specialize in granting wishes that can't be bought at a store. Santa promises to give Ariel the Christmas she wishes for. He still feels like some of that responsibility lies with her. When he leaves, Ariel is surprised he knows her name. Amy agrees with Ariel and thinks they shouldn't do presents that Christmas. Jasmine reminds them they have jobs and money. She's a broke college student who can only stock up on things on Christmas and birthdays. Ariel still feels like it's better to give to people in need. Ariel gets a call from Erica and is excited about them all having the best Christmas ever. She wants it to be a surprise and runs back to work. Ariel's boss, Jeremy Huckabee, calls her to the office for a surprise. He wants her to cover an online Christmas morning feature article. He wants to try something different and asks her to write about the Grinch. He wants to shake things up after taking over the magazine from his father. Ariel suggests writing something heartwarming for the Christmas issue. Jeremy insists on removing the boring stuff, even if the magazine is called Sweet Home. Ariel feels like people love happy Christmas stories, but Jeremy thinks people enjoy the sensation. He asks Ariel to find someone who hates Christmas and just write about them. Ariel starts driving to Winter Springs in North Carolina and arrives at Mountain Holly Cottage. Her phone runs out of battery, and she realizes she doesn't have a charger. She's still excited to own the cottage, and hands Erica a cashier's check. Erica informs her about a slight hiccup a few days ago. There was another interested buyer, but she used Ariel's top price and won the bid. Erica asks her to be careful of the candy cane since they mark the property line. Ariel loves the place, and Erica still can't believe it was available for such a great price on the market. That's surely a catch. It's fully furnished, and Ariel can already picture a Christmas tree there. She's excited to show it to her family, and imagines everyone sitting by the fireplace. Mark walks into the cottage with his realtor, Nick Sage. Erica and Nick both think that their clients own the cottage. They exchange papers and realize that both Ariel and Mark's offers were accepted. Ariel feels like they can clear this up with the seller's agent, but there is none. What a nice surprise. An elderly man sold this place without an agent, so Ariel feels like she has more chances of getting accepted. She wants Mark to know she's made for the cottage life. He seems sure she doesn't look too outdoorsy. Nick and Erica get scared of their competitiveness and decide to clear things up with the land title office. Ariel and Mark agree that a skylight would be good to bring in the natural light. Ariel suggests talking to a professional about it when she moves in. He points out that he's a professional. It makes sense to her that he's a contractor. She feels like that his kind of people turn these gorgeous places into condos. She doesn't think he doesn't deserve this place, which makes him more determined to fight for it. Erica and Nick have spoken to the former owner, Mr. Noel. He doesn't remember which agreement he signed first. According to the land title office, possession will be the determinator. Ariel wants to head home and call her lawyer in the morning to deal with it. When Mark wants to do the same, Erica explains the situation. According to the law, the first person to leave the property will forfeit their right to it. Now it's getting exciting. They're supposed to stay and negotiate possession amongst themselves. Ariel requests Erica to get some makeup staples from her house, while even Mark starts planning to get stuff for a week. Erica explains that this cottage will be back on the market within a week if they don't decide. It will also have the condition that neither of them can purchase it again. Ariel tries to persuade Erica, but she and Nick are still getting their full commission. They're not worried about the clients anymore and decide to leave. They remind them that the offer expires the day after Christmas. Ariel wonders how she'll get her work done. Mark suggests she can just drive back to her house. She refuses to budge and tries to figure out sleeping arrangements. Mark tries to scare her by asking how her boyfriend or husband feels about her living with a stranger. She clarifies that she doesn't have a partner. She also thinks he'll have to do more to scare her. She takes the nice room first and shuts the door on him. Mark calls his younger brother Trevor. He asks to speak to their dad, Duke, and invites them to the cottage. 
He explains that he's keeping his promise of getting them the cottage. He also explains the Ariel situation. Ariel hears something and walks to Mark's room to overhear his conversation. Mark admits she's pretty in a smarty pants, which feels like his type to his family. Mark finds Ariel right outside his door. She pretends she was looking for the bathroom. She finds that the water is shut off and there's just one towel. She informs Mark about the water situation and how the shut-off valve isn't in the bathroom. Mark thinks it must be under the house. He starts reading a book and doesn't want to help her. He suggests she can just go back to her working bathroom at home. The other option is for her to look outside for the valve with the bears. She sits with him and decides to wait till he needs to use the bathroom too. He agrees to help but asks for a flashlight. She has one in her car and carefully reaches for it without crossing the line. When Mark fixes the valve, Ariel remembers she has food in her car. Mark is grateful that she's sharing his food with him. They're both from Charlotte and Bond over that. He's not excited for Christmas but claims he's not a Grinch. Ariel remembers her meeting with Jeremy and how he needs her to interview someone who hates Christmas. She gets interested in Mark's story of how he's not into Christmas. He doesn't want to discuss details and asks about the article she's working on. She explains that she works for the Sweet Home magazine. She wonders what made him buy the place. Mark explains that it's mostly for his family. He's heading to Australia for two years and three weeks. He's an on-site architect for a building he designed with his brother. He explains that he was a contractor. His father has been one for 30 years and he wanted to follow in his footsteps. But Duke had better plans for Trevor and him. Ariel asks if she can use Mark's phone since her battery is dead. Mark pretends his phone isn't working either. She's sure he heard him talk on it half an hour ago. Mark pretends he was talking to himself and didn't bring any charging cables too. Ariel gets angry and takes away his plate. She knows he probably called his family. She feels bad for sharing her meal with an ungrateful person like him. That night, Ariel quietly sneaks into Mark's room while he's dreaming of someone pretty. Who could that be? She charges her phone from his cord and calls someone. He finds her in the hall in the morning and she falls on him. Since they don't have a tree, she's improvising with the lights. She's hoping her Christmas spirit kicks him out of the house. She wonders why he hates Christmas, but he refuses to share anything. Duke and Trevor drive up to the cottage, and she taunts him for pretending his phone isn't working. Duke asks Ariel to forgive Mark because anyone can see she belongs in the cottage. Ariel loves that he's on her side, and warmly welcomes him. They have brought a lot of supplies, and Duke brags about their cooking. Mark's cooking is terrible, but they hope he learns overseas. Ariel remembers what Mark mentioned about Australia. Trevor feels like he should be going instead. Trevor is also an architect, and they worked on the designs for the new project together. Ariel insists they need to make homemade cookies for Christmas, and Duke hopes she's baking. Mark reminds Duke that she is the enemy, but Duke refuses to starve her on Christmas. Ariel teases Mark about his family plan backfiring. Ariel's family also drives up to the place, and Mark realizes she used his cord to charge his phone. Ariel introduces Amy, Jasmine and her dad Peter to the Hendersons. She's warm to Trevor and Duke, while she's not happy about Mark. They're all excited to spend Christmas together and start unpacking all the new supplies. Ariel doesn't like her mom being warm to the Hendersons either. Jasmine and Trevor bond over his guitar, and she explains that she sings. Jeremy asks for an update, so Ariel claims she's doing her article on Mon Arc, who hates Christmas. Amy reminds Ariel she wanted a family Christmas like this, but this is not what she pictured. Careful of what you wish for. Amy also joins Jasmine and Trevor while they're singing carols. Mark teases Ariel about her plan backfiring and their family's bonding. Amy tries to write her article about the Grinch, but thinks it's terrible. Jasmine is enjoying herself and hopes she can add a guitar to her Christmas shopping list. She checks Ariel's laptop and realizes she's writing an article about Mark. Ariel explains that her assignment is due Christmas Eve and Mark doesn't know that he's her subject. Jasmine hopes for her sake that he doesn't read her magazine. Duke joins Ariel at the stairs and hopes she and Mark don't reach an agreement till after Christmas. He thinks this family gathering is good for Mark and is sure that he likes Ariel. She refuses to believe that and thinks they're very different. Duke still feels like it's good for Mark to be around happy people. Duke explains that Mark used to like Christmas. Duke lost his wife six months ago. After that, Mark is upset about spending his first Christmas without her. Duke tried talking to him about it, but he was always closer to his mother. He hopes Mark opens up to Ariel about it. Mark reminds Kathy on call that he's not scheduled to be in Australia for another two and a half weeks. She's about to cancel, so Mark assures her he will be there. He informs Trevor that he will have to leave on December 25th, Christmas Day. The investor is arriving early to approve the designs. 
Mark tries to push it, and Trevor is hurt he's missing their first Christmas without their mom. Mark insists he doesn't want to miss it, but this is their first proper job. If the firm likes them, it could help them design signature buildings. Trevor doesn't know if Mark is doing this because of his career, or since it's easier for him to bail on Christmas. Ariel tries to talk to Mark and offer help, but he walks off. Jasmine feels like this is good news, since the place can be Ariel's after Christmas. Duke and Trevor offer to sleep on the couch, but Mark insists he has some work anyway. Trevor explains that he is planning to leave on Christmas. They all enjoy a family Christmas breakfast the next morning, with Amy's delicious pancakes. Peter knows she will never share the recipe with anyone. Ariel informs them about a tradition her great-grandparents from Germany followed. They always celebrated Christmas one day before, and she feels they should do the same. Everyone is on board with the idea of a proper turkey dinner on Christmas Eve. They just need a Christmas tree, and Peter already has an axe. Peter believes that regardless of who wins the cottage, Duke should go fishing with him. Duke loves the idea, and they discuss the kind of fish they can catch. Peter admits he didn't know Ariel was going to buy a cottage. His parents' stories always made a huge impression on her. Peter feels like she wants the kind of perfect Christmas they talked about. He thinks Ariel is still trying too hard to recapture it. When Trevor finds the perfect tree, Jasmine calls him for help. Jeremy reminds Ariel that the Grinch she chooses must be someone who hates Christmas. He feels like her outline seems a little soft, and he needs something stone cold. He threatens to find someone else for this article, so Ariel promises to deliver. She starts decorating the tree, and Mark offers help too. Trevor and Jasmine announce a secret Santa game that is mandatory for all of them. The gifts are required to be handmade from materials found on the property. They're also not allowed to swap names, but can change if they get their name. They pass around chits, and Trevor makes sure Ariel and Mark get each other. Ariel insists Mark can just hand over the cottage, instead of making her a present if he gets her name. If only it was that easy. Mark is determined to participate and takes on the challenge. Ariel shares with Amy that she's worried about her assignment. If she doesn't give what Jeremy wants, she could lose her promotion and her job. Amy knows she doesn't want to write it, and is sure Ariel will do the right thing. Mark borrows some ingredients from Ariel, and doesn't let her go through his notebook. Trevor teases Mark about the Christmas present and wonders what he's making for Ariel. Mark realizes it's all a part of Trevor and Jasmine's plan because he never mentioned he got Ariel. Mark points out that they don't like each other, but Trevor opens the page with Ariel's sketch. He teases Mark about not wanting Ariel to know he likes her. Mark denies he does, just like Ariel keeps denying Jasmine that she likes Mark. Ariel thinks it doesn't matter since Mark doesn't like her. She's still curious about whether he said anything. Trevor and Jasmine feel victorious, since they're sure Ariel and Mark like each other. Mark finds Ariel in the kitchen in the morning and offers coffee. He wonders what Ariel misses the most about being stuck in the cottage. Ariel admits her family takes turns putting an angel tree topper every Christmas. It's her turn this year, but she feels silly for missing it. Mark admits that's sweet. She wonders what he misses, but he's vague about his answer. Mark shares that he installed a skylight on his parents' roof to watch the sunrise. They didn't notice it for a long time, till his mom found out one day. He was 14 years old then, and Duke was very proud of how he placed it. He loves Ariel's laugh, and it gets awkward when he points it out. He gets saved by a call, by which time the families also join them. His lawyer has informed him that his dad can't sit in for him when he's out of town. Mark needs to leave on Christmas Eve, which is the next day, after dinner. He decides to forfeit his claim anyway, and asks Duke and Trevor to pack their bags. All of them look sad, but Mark insists it'll be better if they head home that night. Ariel asks Duke to stay back with her family. Amy and Peter also back her, and they all feel they're in this together. They decide that even if Mark leaves, Trevor and Duke can stay back for Christmas. Duke thinks of them as family, and doesn't let Mark call them strangers. Mark feels bad he couldn't keep his promise of a cottage. But Duke feels like Mark did much more by introducing him to all these people. Jasmine wonders about Ariel's workload, and if she's writing more for Jeremy. Ariel is curious because Jasmine has never been interested in her job. Jasmine keeps asking for details about things in her job, so Ariel is sure she's up to something. She tries to find out, but Jasmine doesn't let her step out of the room. Mark is making something for Ariel with gingerbread with Amy's help. Amy thinks he should hurry since Jasmine won't be able to hold Ariel off for long. Mark is worried because he has never designed anything with dough. Amy is sure Ariel will still love it. Mark thanks her for letting them stay, but Amy wouldn't have it any other way. This is the happiest she has seen Ariel in a long time. Duke loves how comfortable Ariel is with cooking. His wife Sally was also a great cook. He remembers her favorite Christmas recipe as a sweet potato mash with pecans and raisins. 
He feels like his sons miss it, and they eat it like dessert. Ariel guesses that the pecans were candied when Duke confirms that they were sweet and crunchy. Sally had a secret ingredient she never told anyone about. He remembers that it tasted fresh like the morning sun. Well, that's surely helpful. Ariel wonders why Mark didn't follow in his footsteps and become a contractor. Duke is glad Mark is smarter than a lot of architects they worked with. He's proud that they just use his designs now. Mark even forced Trevor to go to college even when he was hesitating initially. Duke explains that Mark wanted to buy this cottage because he made a promise to his mother. They used to have a cottage to spend the holidays in. They had to sell it for Sally's treatment when she got sick. Weeks before she passed away, she made her sons promise that they would find a cottage for Duke. When Jasmine notices that Mark is busy with the deck, she gives Ariel the green signal. Ariel makes Duke and Trevor try her different variations of sweet potato mash. The last one tastes exactly like how Sally made it, and they feel victorious. Ariel starts writing her article about Christmas in the Pines, but Jasmine suggests she should join Mark. He's fixing the porch for her because her family has been very kind. Ariel admits she doesn't want Mark to miss Christmas, even if he doesn't like it. Mark is glad his family is with hers because he wants them to be around happy people. Mark doesn't know what he needs, and it's something no one can buy at a store. Ariel understands that he misses his mom, but knows she wouldn't want him to hate Christmas. She feels like it's a time for hope and forgiveness, even though nothing will replace her. Mark remembers how amazing she was, and his Christmas memories are all about waking up to her cooking. She used to start baking a month before Christmas, and the neighborhood smelled like cookies. Ariel assures him their cottage will smell better the next day for dinner. She also knows Duke loves him a lot. She assures Mark that all of them are there for him. Ariel continues writing her article and sends it, but she doesn't notice an error. They run out of pine cones and need a lot more to decorate the tree. Mark suggests checking the attic, which shows a lot of potential. He asks Ariel to find anything nice to make ornaments with. They find paint when Trevor and Jasmine also join them. Trevor suggests they can make wooden balls with the extra wood on the porch. He's sure they can whip something up with some tools in Duke's van. Ariel asks Jasmine to help her find things to decorate the balls with. Mark finds a tree topper box and takes it with him. Jasmine wonders how it's going with Mark, but Ariel feels like she won't see him again when he leaves. Trevor suggests Mark should talk to Ariel about his feelings before he leaves. Jasmine points out that Trevor is sure Mark likes her. Mark thinks there's no point in sharing his feelings because he'll be in Australia soon. Ariel admits that she likes him, and even Mark blushes when Trevor thinks she likes him. They hand over the balls to the ladies, who start painting them. Mark gives Ariel the angel tree topper he found in the attic. He has another Christmas present before he leaves. Ariel already guessed they were each other's secret Santa, because of their scheming siblings. She wants to get his present ready too, and asks him to meet her outside by the fire. Mark feels like his gift might be stupid, but Ariel stops him from hiding it. She loves that he's made a replica of the cottage with gingerbread, and that it has a skylight. She wants it to last long, but promises to eat it the next morning. She gives him the finished sweet potato mash she prepared. It tastes exactly how Sally used to make it. Ariel reveals that she used orange juice and ginger as the secret ingredient. Mark feels grateful, and wishes he didn't have to leave. He tries to kiss her but their siblings invite them in for dinner. Way to spoil their plan. Jeremy hasn't received Ariel's article yet, and is driving to her cottage. They all enjoy an amazing Christmas dinner till they're interrupted by a knock. Mark lets Jeremy in, who is excited to meet the subject of Ariel's article. He's frustrated she forgot to submit it. He also feels like Mark doesn't look like he hates Christmas. Could have fooled us. Mark feels offended that she's been writing about him when he shares his feelings with her. He remembers all the questions she was asking him and walks off. Ariel asks Jasmine to hand over the article to Jeremy while she talks to Mark. After Jasmine transfers it, she asks all the others to read her article. Ariel tries to explain that she didn't want to write the article, but Mark is sure she twisted his words and made him sound bad. He feels like she sold him out and that he can't trust her again. Duke can tell Ariel is in love with Mark, just like he is with her. Mark has never been that hurt, and it can only happen with someone you love. Ariel feels like it's too late to apologize to Mark, but Duke insists she should talk to him again with her laptop. Ariel comes to his room again to apologize and asks him to read the article before he judges her. Mark starts reading the article, where Ariel mentions how she usually makes sure she has a perfect Christmas. She admits she has realized she doesn't cherish what's in front of her. It makes things perfect always. She discusses Mark's family and how hard it is for them to spend Christmas without Sally. She feels bad for complaining about not having a perfect Christmas when Mark's family is trying to make the best of what they have. They have made her realize Christmas is about being present for the ones we love. 
She also realized it was very important to find a missing ingredient in a recipe and help someone fulfill a promise. Mark stops Ariel from crossing the property line. She's trying to forfeit so Mark can have the cottage. She admits this is the best Christmas she has had, and it's because all of them were together. Mark steps beyond the line before her, but Peter informs them it's a little ahead. He fudged the lines a little when he bumped his car into the candy canes. Ariel puts her foot forward first and is glad Mark gets the cottage. Mark kisses her, and the whole family cheers for them. They decide to open their secret Santa presents, and Amy gets a hummingbird nest from Peter. Duke is grateful for the cap someone made for him since he needed it. He asks Peter to join him after the holidays for fishing in the nearby lake. While Trevor gets a guitar strap, he hands over his whole guitar to Jasmine. He assures her he has more at home, and he'll teach her some songs too. Mark has decided that his family wants to buy this cottage with Ariel's family. He wants them all to be together even when he's gone. Duke also admits Sally wanted him to have a cottage, but it's all of them that he needs. Jasmine admits Ariel was right and that she doesn't need a huge Christmas list anymore. The owner Mr. Noel arrives and he turns out to be the same Santa Ariel met at the mall. What are the chances? When Mark excuses himself for a call, Santa asks if Ariel got the Christmas she hoped for. She admits it was great, but he knows it wasn't perfect. He thumps his stick on the floor and it takes out some sparks. Mark informs them that his meeting has been pushed to the second week of January. He also wants Trevor to take up this project instead and feels like he's ready for it. Mark has another reason to stay and wants to be with Ariel. Santa refuses to take credit for this. He claims Christmas is what she made it, just like Amy told her earlier. Mark takes Ariel outside and kisses her. 